Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Zaskia and I will be teaching you a quick lesson in EGD or in other words GRDS which stands for Engineering Graphics and Design and this lesson will be about solid geometry. Good day everyone and welcome to our EGD lesson for solid geometry. Now this is only one lesson so please bear with me. I'll try and show you as much as possible for our short lesson. Now, first of all, solid geometry is what we are going to do today. So we'll have a look at some 3D representation of our object that we are going to draw or a version of it. Then we'll have a look at our Canvas course as well, just to find where we can find a bit of extra resources to assist us when we are drawing. And then lastly, we'll draw something together. So you can draw with me and pause the recording as I go so that you can keep up with my drawing. Okay, so first I'm going to quickly share with you an uh, object. All right, there are two objects on my screen, so I'm going to share my screen with you. So this is basically what we can expect when we are doing solid geometry pieces or drawings. So this is just a 3D representation of something that we would draw orthographic or in 2D views. So you can see it has been sectioned. So there's a lighter part or a green part that represents where we cut the object. So we can normally, we draw the top view where we can see a version of the slanted view. We can even see the front view. So there you can see the slanted part of the pyramid, but you can see the section part of the prism. And that's normally what we would have in our drawings. So this is just to visualize it a little bit better. But if you want, you can even try and rotate it in a way that you look onto the cut surface of the prism at a 90 degree angle. And that is where we start doing things such as the true shape of a section surface. So you might not only get this, you might get two objects next to each other. You might even get a hollow part or a hole in one of your shapes. But normally it's a solid thing that we have to section. All right, so if you are struggling with this, you can always go to additional videos on your front page. All right, and when you are there, you'll see three drop down menus. You can open term two, and you can go to solid geometry just to go and view some extra videos. So the first drop down is internal videos. That is where you can watch videos that we've recorded for your grade. You have external videos, which are YouTube videos, and then also grade 10 revision, because this is a grade 11 lesson. So if you just want to revise the previous year's work, you can do so in this way. You can also go back to your home page. And if you want to do a quick checklist of your course drawing that you are going to submit, you can open resources and then go to chapter notes. There you will find a disclaimer saying that you cannot use this during a test or an exam and you can scroll all the way until you find solid geometry. There's a little checklist that you can memorize and make sure that all of those aspects are on your drawing. All right, so that's a way that you can double check yourself before you submit your drawings. All right, but before I get too excited, let's draw something together. All right, so here you can see my page. And in today's drawing, we have a front view and a top view. So these are our 2D views. And this is normally in first angle orthographic, which means everything is topsy-turvy town. Our top view is going to be at the bottom. Our left view will be on the right. And if there were a right view, it would be on the left. So everything's on the opposite side because it is in the first quadrant. All right, we have cutting plane ZZ over here, and we need to draw a sectional left view on ZZ. So we need to show the sectioned part. So all we have to do is we have our new XY line. And this is something I call loose XY lines. It's probably the wrong name for it. <laughs> but this is normally what we have. So you would project all those points over. All right. And we don't need that 45 degree line to project over our dimensions. Today, we're going to use loose XYs, which changes our dimensions. Um, so here we have our XY. So we need to number before I get too excited. We have to number. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you can number any way you like. And because this is a pyramid, 
we have to call that O or T for top or A for apex. All right, here in line is number two and three. Here we have number one and four in line. And here we have number five and six in line. And then of course our apex. So we projected that over, but it's a bit difficult determining things all the way on a straight line. And that is why we use our compasses to convey over dimensions. Excuse my hand for a moment. So I'm constantly working from my XY and using the top view as an auxiliary view or a helping view. All right, so we plot that over from our new XY, that's number one, and we call it X1, Y1 because it's a new XY from our original. The original is called XY, and that is the first XY after the original. So that's why it's X1, Y1. Here we have the dimension of six and should be the same for two. I'm going to plot that guy. That would be two and six. All right. Next, I'm going to use a bigger compass. There you go. So I'm getting the dimension for five and three. And you plot it from your XY. That is called five and three. And then our furthest point for the base, we have four from your XY to corner number four. Go. And then of course the apex, we need the apex as well. So there it's not gonna be very difficult. You get all your dimensions from your view as is. Okay, so sometimes we don't always have our views all the way straight. Sometimes we have views that are slanted, but that does not affect our XY line. Our XY lines would always, always have to be vertical and horizontal. Couldn't remember the word. <laughs> now, it's important that we remember this is a section. So before we draw everything in dark, we need to draw it in construction or C-type lines before we draw it in A-type lines. And the reason being we need the original shape before we can section something. All right, so there we draw our view. And of course, we can number the apex as well with the O, just to keep track. Okay, now the fun part starts. Now that we have everything in construction except the base, we need to project over all our lines. So here we have edge five and six, and this is called an edge. So we would project over where our cutting plane meets the edge five and six. Here's edge five and here's edge six. Next, we have edge one and four meeting the uh, cutting plane. And those are on the furthest corners. I didn't even write four here. Those are on the furthest corners. So we make a little dot just to plot our shape and then two and three are in the same place. So we draw that. Now, just moving my T squared. All right, now it's a game of a complicated game of connect the dots because in no game of connect the dots, you get your own dots. So we need to connect them. All right, connect it. All right, that is going to be our sectioned surface. So just to indicate to the person looking at your drawing, you need to hatch. And this is what I normally call default hatching at 45 degrees and evenly spaced. Try to not hatch too close together because not only will it be very time consuming, but it will also affect your neatness. So then you hatch that just to show that that is a sectioned surface. That's where the blade passed through, almost like a wooden object, where if you saw through a wooden object, you would have lines on it that the saw left behind. So this is the same concept. Okay, and that is how you draw a sectional left view on ZZ. But that is then all from my side. I hope that there is a little bit helpful and I hope to see you quite soon. Have a great day.